Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to be covering what I believe to be uh, some of the major pros and cons of applying fundamental and risks risk sentiment analysis to your technical analysis and uh, one thing I definitely want to make absolutely clear this is not um, a polarizing debate as in fundamentals versus technicals right because at the end of the day both have their strengths and uh, and weaknesses and um, you know the best thing to do really in my opinion is to combine uh, both the best of both so um, I definitely don't want to you know make out like this is uh, you know fundamentals are the be all and end all they work hand in hand yeah and so um, I guess if you are a technical trader um, who is thinking about you know applying uh, fundamentals to your technical trading and I'm assuming that technicals obviously isn't working for you otherwise you really wouldn't be watching this video right if the technicals were you know were, were working for you so this you, you realize that there's actually something more than just technical analysis maybe there's something else that you're missing in your trading and whether you know learning the fundamentals can uh, help you with that and it's helped um, many traders in the uh, trading 180 discord group the my mentoring group and um you can watch the uh um some of the interviews that i've done um there's a link in the uh in the description box below or there's a I think maybe a bit of a pop out that might come up in the top right hand side of the screen anyways let's get into the pros and uh some of the cons of applying fundamental and risk sentiment analysis to your technical analysis trading and whether you really want to right so um one of the uh pros is that you will trade in the same direction as financial institutions not against them in the medium to long term right and what i mean by that is in the short term um <clears throat> the, the 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 market uh, is generally looking for uh, liquidity, right? So there is a business model and the business model is uh, for the financial institutions, the big money to be able to transact and for market makers to provide the liquidity at certain prices for uh, for those uh, financial institutions to do uh, transactions, right? Now in the short term, um, the market is very illiquid, uh, which means that you will have uh, it can it can seem a bit you know random, right? As far as you know, prices going higher, prices going lower, da 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 da. But generally, over the medium to long term, the fundamentals and risk sentiment analysis will always work itself out, right? I and mean, if you don't understand about what we mean about fundamental analysis in forex. Um, you know, price is generally driven over the medium to long term by uh, certain principles like uh, monetary policy, central bank monetary policy, which is hiking, holding and cutting interest rates because hiking, holding, cutting interest rates should have the effect of appreciating or uh, or depreciating, devaluing a currency, and it's necessary. It doesn't mean that the, the you know appreciating is good and depreciating is bad. In in order to run an economy uh, successfully, there are times where you will need a devalued currency, and there are times where you will need an, a, a more um, expensive currency, right? And the currency to appreciate. It's not good or bad. So the central banks are generally in the medium to long term. Um, uh, influencing the currency through um, interest rate hikes so um, and that generally plays itself out over the medium to long term right but in the short term as the financial institutions are accumulating the uh, you know you can be long on a currency pair yet price can go down right and it can go down maybe uh, a couple you know hundred pips that doesn't mean that you were wrong about the trade it just means that the um the financial institutions are buying for hundreds of pips cheaper than you know if they expect it to be maybe a thousand pips higher in the medium to long term right it's just a pullback so <clears throat> You'll always trade in the same directions as the financial institutions, not against them over the medium to long term. And also, um, you'll understand that value is not always reflected in price. Yeah. So price is not value and value is not always the price of things. And this comes down to buy low, sell high. If you understand 
uh, fundamental principles on why something is a bargain or a cheap or fair value rather than it being expensive, then you're filtering out, I guess, a lot of, um, you're not really FOMOing, right? You're not going to FOMO because prices are, you know, you've just seen a massive, you know, green candle or a red candle, a bullish candle, bearish candle. You're not going to FOMO into certain price action because, in fact, um, there are times where, again, due to um, liquidity, yeah, let me just draw this out and I should have been drawing this out. Um, due to liquidity, you can have, let's say, for example, you could be long on a trade, right? Have a long bias and then you see a massive bearish candles. How many times have you seen like a massive bearish candle, right? And then um, all of a sudden it starts to reverse. Yeah, and that's because or bearish candles or bearish price action. And that's because what the financial institutions were doing, right? If this is price and this is time yeah what they were doing was while you know uh, traders were following and following into price action going short what they were doing was taking the other side of the trade and buying yeah and then they because they understood the value as prices come down is cheap they're not chasing uh, price all right so with that being said um, you know it's all about understanding you know the fact that you want to identify value and um, if you know the, the 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 value is cheap at the moment and buying low and selling high and sorry going back to uh you know trading in the same direction as the um as the financial institutions this is just uh, some proof as to what you know the, the financial institutions do right when they come out with their analysis um this is ing bank they make forecasts and it's 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 based you know their forecasts and um and and directional bias are based on what's happening fundamentally, right? You've got you've got ING Bank, you've got Citibank that talk about why they're going to be, you know, what their bias is, what their forecast is, what their key levels are, and it's all centered around um, you know, central bank policy and risk sentiment. Right, so it's not you know me, Leon Rose saying this and and hypothesizing on what the banks are doing. If you you know the internet. Uh, you can you can look this stuff up and um you know the banks tell you what they're actually um doing and the banks are not trying to mislead their uh their their subscribers right they're not trying to be wrong um there's a difference between um you know mainstream media and um and what you know the banks are actually doing right yes there are situations where banks are wrong, right? They're not 100% right all the time. No one, no one is right. But the point being is that they base their buying and selling decisions over the medium to long term, and even in the short term, and can do obviously um, on their fundamental and risk sentiment bias. Yeah, it's not necessarily driven by you know um, technical levels. Technical levels are are what we use as uh, just um, to to try and get into and out of trades, right? And I identifying where potential bargains are anyways applying the correct strategy to the correct market state and um, this is important right because if you don't understand what the the, the, the the drivers are let's say for example you have a central bank that is looking to high crates right which should appreciate a currency and a central bank that is looking to cut rates which should deep depreciate or devalue the currency right because currencies are trading traded in pairs what should happen right again over the medium to long term is you should have a trend right if this is for example the <clears throat> the uh, dollar yen right right dollar yen where the dollar is hiking rates and the yen is you know cutting rates for example i mean at the moment they're looking to probably uh, hold rates but you will see this happen right in this trend right now if you understand this and you're trying to trade a you know you've got a strategy that you know works really well when you know price action is going sideways and i hesitate to use sideways it's more it's it's an auction right it's a fair value auction is what is actually happening but to, to, from a descriptive perspective you know traders will say a ranging or sideways moving market then you're going to get um, crushed, right? You're going to, you know, uh, sell at certain levels and, you know, maybe not buy at certain levels, etc. Your, your, your strategy is just not going to work. And you'll 
that you're there scratching your head as to why the strategy isn't working when you should understand ultimately that um, the market is in a trending you know phase and similar to that where you have maybe two central banks that might be you know hiking rates at the same time and might or might be cutting rates at the same time or might be holding rates at the same time you should right have a market state where you have a range what's known as a fair value auction right because you know it's a straight in a straight fight it's just a case of it's, it's an agreed value between what's you know um where where sellers are and buyers are yeah and um and so you know if you if you understand that there's two central banks um hiking rates or cutting rates or holding rates this is what typically should happen in that environment if you're trying to apply a trend trading strategy to a market fundamentally that is likely to range yeah or or, or auction or accumulate phase then it's just not going to work right but you will never know this you will never have any idea of what is going on if you don't understand what really i guess the masters of the universe are trying to do with currencies yeah and that you cannot it's impossible to tell what a central bank is doing just by looking at price action so we need the assistance we need the assistance well i do anyway um if you don't then good for you right but um you know i need the assistance of understanding um, what the central banks are going to do, therefore, what the financial institutions are also looking to do, right? The INGs, the city banks, the MUFGs, the ANZs, the HSBCs, the Barclays of the worlds are also going to do, right? Because they look at what the central banks are doing <clears throat> and they look at the fundamentals and risk sentiment. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> applying the correct strategy technical strategy to the correct market state and also selecting the best currency pairs right that comes down to you know understanding why you should trade the dollar yen uh, and maybe not for example the the um the, the the maybe the aussie dollar us dollar for example if there's two central banks hiking rates maybe you don't want to t uh, trade that uh take that currency pair if you have a trend trading strategy knowing that maybe those two central banks are strong at the moment <clears throat> and they, then prices might likely to range. So you can adjust, which is what we constantly have to do, be fluid in our decision making and uh, recognize when things are changing because many traders will have a great, you know, um, will just luckily, you know, pick a, a trend, right? Not understanding the underlying um uh, uh direction for why you know there is maybe for example a long trend they will say something silly like oh this is my favorite pair until all of a sudden you know fundamentally something changes then all of a sudden you get maybe a ranging market and then they get chopped out here and here and here and here and if they didn't know what was going on fundamentally or risk sentiment wise they basically given back all their uh, their profits from the trend right so you have to be aware or i would say um fundamentals makes you aware of that state um and it gives you fundamentals and risk sentiment analysis gives you the uh, confidence i guess um to to uh to hold trades for longer why you know would we ever get out of, of a trade why would i ever just take a uh, a one-to-one -one trade or scalp when i understand that you know um, in again the medium to long term a trade could go potentially for hundreds or even thousands of pips right if you don't understand that you know there are again um, uh, entities the central banks that are actively looking to um, either you know appreciate or depreciate a currency over the medium to long term to help their economy to help the economy um, of the country that they're uh, they're based in taking a, a, a trade and only scalping for like you know 20 pips for me is absolute madness right it's absolute madness and it's very difficult i guess for traders to um to hold trades right if you don't understand what's going on um behind the scenes um you're just looking at your your, your pnl right your profit and loss and you're saying okay well um i should you know just just take this profit and then try to get in uh, again at some you know later time right which is and there's again there's nothing wrong with that if you want to do that but um it makes life a whole lot easier if you can if you manage to buy low for example 
right? And then get in on the trade and then just ride the trend and not have to go through the the, 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 the nonsense of trying to re-enter trades, taking profit, re-enter trades, taking profits when you can just trail your stop, you know, behind uh, swings, right? That's all you're really doing and riding the trend that way. So it gives you a lot of confidence. And this is not just me saying this. This is, again, if you you know watch the uh, playlist that I've created where I interview traders um, who have been in the group who are applying fundamental analysis to their technical trading and to my technical trading as well, because I do provide um, technical analysis, supply and demand strategies. Um, you'll hear them say it as well, right? It's not just me saying this, it's, it's them. You know, um, the people who are just like you watching this video and was wondering whether you should, uh, uh, whether they should uh, apply fundamental analysis and they're seeing the benefits of applying fundamental analysis to their technical, uh, to technical trading. So it gives you the confidence and then helps with the psychology knowing that um, you've got um, influences um, uh, or you, you know you've got a high degree and a high probability of, of, of uh, a, a trade going for again hundreds of pips and not taking profits too early and then missing out and then FOMOing and then not following the strategy right um, and less is more right so brokers want you to over trade and that is uh, absolute fact that's their business model right they make money on the spread so um they want you to over trade and they want you to trade during periods of um of illiquidity right they want to trade they want you to trade at all hours of the day all hours of the night when ultimately the, the right trading opportunity and bargains aren't you know don't, don't appear every single day or even every single week right depending on you know what what pairs you're actually trading there's always an opportunity to trade always an opportunity to trade you know, you can just take a trade right now at this point in time as a buy or sell trade, right? But is it the right trade? Yeah. And so uh, trading, I'd rather trade, you know, uh, take maybe 10 trades a month rather than 10 trades a day. If those 10 trades a month were high quality, high probability trades in alignment with where the, the, the financial institutions or, you know, may look at um uh, that price being an absolute bargain right or the value being a bargain at a certain price and like i said um just because you know you're on a price chart right and you're you're seeing prices come down to maybe a level doesn't mean that that level on a five minute chart is a bargain right because um the, the financial institutions may might be looking at a 200 pip pullback a 300 pip pullback as an absolute bargain so rather than having to trade yeah, at every single five minute, 10 minute, you know, support zone, support level, for example, for your buying opportunity, you know, with fundamental analysis, you understand, you know, and look at maybe higher time frames and then zooming down into the lower time frames, you understand that, you know what, we're at an expensive area right now. Yeah. In fact, I'm looking for a bit of a, you know, a more of a pullback, right, to maybe some sort of fair value or bargain area. Um, and that is where we think that you know the the, uh, the the financial institutions have done all their buying and accumulating, etc. Right, and then that may be the turnaround point, etc. So um, less is more. Um, just because again someone's taking more trades than you uh, doesn't mean that they're making you know more profit than you. The, the number of trades you take does not equate to the amount of profit you will make. Somebody could take again ten trades a year. Right, and make you know way more money than someone who's taking a thousand trades uh, a year. So, you know, for me, um, less is more. For some people, it might not be. But if um, you know you find that you you haven't got the time to day trade, or you're you know you're 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 um, not focusing, and you know you're you're in a state of confusion, sometimes it's best to stop. You know, take a step back and actually just really observe and see where the the, the higher probability trades are um, in in relation to fundamental analysis and risk sentiment analysis, and then um, you know move on to uh, and then pick your trades wisely. Now, the cons of applying uh, fundamental analysis, right? The cons of and again, there probably may be more than this, possibly, uh, and probably there there are, but these are what I would consider to be probably like the major ones, right? 
to the cons of applying fundamental analysis and risk sentiment analysis is that there is no shortcuts. There's a there, there can be a learning curve. A learning curve meaning that you know um, fundamentals can be very overwhelming. That you can go down the rabbit hole in terms of the amount of information that you have to um, filter out right because and even just trying to filter the information is is hard enough but if you you know have a mentor for example or someone who's done it you know that filters out the information and it's not not just forex that you know whether it's where you're trading you know commodities whether you're trading bonds whether you're trading the stock market there is a fundamental element to um to everything because fundamentals really uh, how you derive value so from the perspective of having to learn fundamentals and learning what's important and what's not that there is a learning curve and there are no shortcuts unfortunately if there was a shortcut um then uh, you know then, then then we'd all be doing it and the reason why traders generally tend to stick to technical analysis it's because um a, they probably haven't got the time to you know learn fundamentals and most people do want to get rich quick and they do tend to take shortcuts right but there are things there are there are uh, skills in life that just you cannot there, there are no shortcuts right any high level um any high level skill um, you cannot shortcut your way to being the best at. It's just literally as simple as that. Um, and also as well, um, patience, right? You with fundamental analysis, and I don't really see this as a as a as a con, but some people will. If you're day trading, for example, um, will see this as a con and. Um, you know, patience, less opportunities due to directional bias. So, what do I mean by that? Um, with, 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 with trading and going long and going short at levels, technical trading solely, right? Again, there are loads of opportunities, right? Prices come up to here, and you could get moved to the downside, right? Brilliant, you make some money on there. If you, you know, end up losing on that trade, then you can, you know, look for a trade here, right? Um, and it's just literally looking for levels to trade off of. And again, for some people, that's brilliant for them. Um, uh, and trading less um, actually may be a, um, uh, and having patience to only trade in one direction because with fundamental analysis, there's no way in, in that I'm trading against my fundamental bias, right? So, um, so for example, let's say, you know, we're on a daily time frame chart. And let's say uh, uh, one of the things that, that that can happen, and it's happened to me recently, right, is that I've been trying to buy the dollar. Um, I've actually, I got into the dollar Swiss recently, which made um, which I'm still in that as it goes, and I, I, I'm up a good few hundred pips on that one. But um, but sometimes you might you may miss a trade for whatever reason, right? You might not be around on the chart. Um, you might not necessarily get the entry or the setup might not have occurred at a certain level, right? And if, you know, you, you've got strong fundamentals, you can have, you know, uh, a, 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 tr a really strong trend and shallow pullbacks, whereas, you know, we're looking for more deeper pullbacks because we're looking for, you know, bargain opportunities. Now, um, let's say, for example, prices start to pull back a bit, right? And let's say, you know, there's a there's a, maybe a demand zone that I would like to get involved in. Now, traders will look at that as well you should you could have just taken a short trade there down into the zone and then taken a long trade there but for me um i don't think that way that's not the way i think i'm just waiting for the price to come to me yeah regardless of whether prices pull back um i'm going to miss out on you know a potential short yeah, and that could be again. This is a con of, of of fundamental analysis trading. Whereas traders who are just trading any direction, whether they're going long, they're going short, etc., have more opportunities um, to take that trade. But as I said before, and just because you've got more opportunities doesn't equate to the, you know um, more profit, right? Because at the end of the day, whether you're going long or going short. Um, if I'm right about this trade, or fundamentally you're right about this trade, and this goes, you know, a good few hundred pips, or even a thousand pips or so, and you manage to ride that that trend with traders who trade short term, they're generally scalping, so they could take maybe, you know, I don't know, uh, they could take maybe 20 trades, right, and make potentially maybe 150 pips. Yeah, I could take one trade and make, you know, 400 pips. So again. 
it's uh it's 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 all relative right but the point being is that a con of fundamental analysis is having patience and sometimes this pullback can take you know days weeks and even months right this is time right it could take a month before you get a decent pullback into you know a demand zone or up into a potential you know supply zone right which for some traders and some people, and depending on you know your approach to trading and your your expectations, can be very frustrating. You know, people say, "Well, how am I going to get rich if you know I'm only taking you know one trade a week or two trades a week?" Um, <laughs> the the thing is, you're not going to get rich taking a thousand trades a week. I believe that. You know, what I mean, I, I can tell you that now. So, um, so the but the but the point in trading is really is to understand where the right opportunities for you are and applying you know the fundamental analysis um, to your trading, whether you do or whether you don't, right? Because this is what it's about. This is just understanding the pros and the cons of. Uh, f applying fundamental analysis to your trading and whether you want to and in you know my humble opinion um, you know technical analysis trading if you're still watching this video obviously alone isn't working for you right it's just as simple as that because if it was you wouldn't be looking at learning fundamental analysis you'd be just getting on with taking uh, uh, trading your technical analysis strategy but you're here for a reason you know and um, if you're you no know, not succeeding with fundamental or I should say technical analysis only, then you know there's something more that you really have to do. And there are people out there that make technical analysis work great for them. I wish I could make technical analysis work for me. It would make my life a whole lot easier if I could. But like I guess the movie The Matrix, once your eyes have been opened. Um, to the reality of things or my you know a, a certain reality of of how the markets work once you understand the fundamentals um, you know uh, it it it, it you, there's no moving there's no turning back and also as well we have a bit of when I, when I was talking about a learning curve with a learning curve like every learning curve you know if you're down here for example um, and you're saying to yourself oh my days I've got to climb that steep mountain. I don't know, you know, how I'm going to, you know, learn all this stuff. Once you start learning, like riding a bike, it, it starts to become second nature. And rather than climbing up a, you know, a, a steep mountain, you get to the top eventually and it starts to become a lot easier. And then, you know, I wouldn't say you necessarily go on autopilot, but you, um, things become automatic, right? More automatic. You, you, you're not thinking about things as much as when you were, uh, learning again this happens with any skill so at the beginning there is a barrier to entry right and that barrier to entry is time and dedication and you regardless of you know how many however many years i've been trading fundamental and risk sentiment analysis there's always a level of hard work that needs to go into it but trust me the guys in my group now understand you know all scenarios they can trade in any environment and it does get um easier right does get easier and um, it doesn't get as difficult to, to, to learn you know what to look for and basically filter out the noise so there is some positive you know things around uh, around fundamental and learning even though again we have a learning curve and there are no shortcuts there are you know huge benefits to that and um, again if you did want to uh, watch the the uh, the interviews and I say in, I put interview there, um, but interviews with um, uh, with with some of the uh, guys as well. There's a playlist. Um, number one is with Ken. I think I've got maybe about seven or eight interviews with uh, traders in the group, and they're all explaining and um, and uh, uh, their their uh, experience with fundamentals. There, you know, where they were trading before they joined Trading One Eighty and um, how they apply fundamental analysis trading as well as some of their biggest trades using fundamental analysis. Anyways, guys, I hope you found that um, useful and uh, take care. And uh, if you do uh, apply fundamental analysis to your trading, I wish you all the best. If you don't, if you found this uh, this video a bit like, oh, well, you know what, the, 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 the cons outweigh the pros, then you know I sincerely wish you all the best of luck with your trading. Take care and uh, speak to you all soon.